advocate. McDonald's food is not healthy as shit. McDonald's food is exactly as healthy as any other food. That's it. If it was healthy, it. I'd eat it all the time, and then I'd be like in good condition, in good health condition. Well, it's there's also exercise too, not just diet. <laughs> there's also what? There's also exercise, not just diet. Well, that's true, but at <laughs> least eighty percent of your results are based off of your diet, mm -mm. right? Zero percent of your results are based off your diet. Okay, so that means I can eat like shit and then work out every day, or not every day, have some rest days, obviously, but and then be in like fit bodybuilding, competitive bodybuilding shape or something like that. No, what I mean, could be, could be Brian, like Shaq and Charles Barkley would eat McDonald's beforehand, but they're burning the calories necessary. What it means, Abraham, is very simple. That to the extent that you don't think about your diet at all, and you eat exactly what you want, and your body tells you you're actually hungry, and eat the things your body kind of suggests you want to eat, and don't ever think about your diet at all, that's the most healthy way to eat. So if you if your body says, I want McDonald's again, then the most healthy thing for you to do is to eat McDonald's. You know what we should do? We should eat McDonald's tomorrow, Eric. Okay. No and then we should go run a mile. <laughs> Freaking Abraham. E even if I was less able to run a mile because I eat McDonald's, that wouldn't prove I was less healthy. It would prove I was less willing to do something stupid like run a mile. But we should still do it, right? No. <laughs> Taylor, are you there? Wait, what? I'm talking to Taylor. <clears throat> I can't hear he's on. Brooks. I said I'm turning on. <clears throat> he turned on his mic, but I haven't heard him say anything. What you been up to, Brooks? Anything exciting going on? Uh, I just went up to uh, San Jose about two weeks ago. And so I just got done with my move and getting settled. To San Jose, huh? Yep. From San Francisco? Uh, I was in the city. It's kind of like right in the middle of the two. I see. Have you searched any K-12 students recently? Uh, shoot, I got a new kid um, at a private class that I teach on Sundays. Kid's a fourth grader. He started debating as a third grader last year. Did you search him? That's my question. If you did search him, did you use probable cause or reasonable suspicion? Oh. Your <laughs> I thought you meant work with. Uh, no, no searching. Hmm. I like that topic. If you're doing that PF topic, I don't know if you are. Uh, but the K-12 through search protocols topic, I like it a lot. It's super, super complicated. Uh, but we're going to compete at Fullerton this weekend at that topic. I, don't ha I only have one PF. So we'll see how we do. I mean, I like the topic too. Yeah, go ahead. Um, actually, just finish your thought. Just finish your thought. Yeah, I was gonna say I like the topic a lot. Um, my when I was lecturing on it, I would always t um, stress my students that unfortunately their judges are parents or teachers, and by default they're gonna probably be pretty uh, predisposed to the negative. But it forces a platform debater, especially in the affirmative to change the framework from a more policy discussion to an LD discussion via ought being in the topic and then teaching them like observations to say like look if in order to have an academic discussion on the topic we're gonna have to kind of rule out some precedents here like like feel over uh, so that's how, I, how I've been coaching it. Rule out some precedents like what? Like TLOV New Jersey. Um, uh, what's TLO, yeah, the Supreme Court could call that. Okay, because see, we were running like LD stuff a little bit, but I switched it up. Now we're running what I have my fingers crossed is going to work. It's a, it's the, this is not a guideline for searches. It's a rule that judges use to determine the admissibility of evidence. And so it's not actually going to change the number of searches in the school. Rather, it's going to change, it's going to render the evidence found into a different status. And therefore, we should affirm this resolution because teachers and administrators can still use 
the uh, reasonable suspicion standard to guide their own searches and thus render all the evidence inadmissible in court and thus prevent any of those children from being thrown in jail. This gives teachers and administrators an out to both keep kids safe with searches and prevent law enforcement from getting involved in any way that can actually harm the children. It's not a pick. Hmm? It's not a pick. I think it's a I think almost it's pickish. It's pickish. Pickish. There's no plan to, in, to be inclusive. <laughs> I like you. I didn't say I didn't like you. <laughs> oh, it's really good. I like that a lot. Thank you. Uh, Taylor, this is my friend Stephen Burks from Northern California. He is a another debate coach. And I would say a couple years ago, uh, he was most successful in the country at, at Nationals. And I walked away from there saying, he walked, I wa watched him walk away. And I, I, in my mind, there's a target on his back, right? I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, that happens really. Yeah, he, he was the best. And, and I mean, that's what I said to my team. I'm like, look, we already know who the best debate coach in the country is. It's that fucker up north. But it's not going to be <laughs> more next year, and you guys better get your ass in shape. You know, it's like that kind of a thing, right? It's good to have that kind of competition. And it's Please tell me. I, I tell met me. him finally, like, at Harker, maybe six months after that, or, some, or a year after that national. I don't know. It was like last year or something. It's cool. So, so did you give your kids the, the that fucker speech? <laughs> I, I don't think he did. He's INFJ. I don't think he's worried about you know, it. When, when I coach <laughs> my kids, uh, I do give a lot of, I hate those fucker speeches. Oh, you get them mm. too, huh? I mean, I, I always joke with my kid, like, there's a re like, we hate all these different schools, and we hate them for specific reasons. <laughs> and, and but, but trust me, there's, there's those very few schools that, like, man, they just, they, they work the right way. I, I can't hate them. And so there, there are occasionally schools and programs that we, we don't put on that list. Yeah. Uh, kudos to the <laughs> evil empire. We call them the evil empire. Is that INFJ or INTJ? INFJ. Taylor. I and that's why I wanted you to come on and meet him because Taylor's got a. He's not necessarily. He doesn't automatically embrace the whole INFJ thing as thoroughly necessarily as some others might in theory. Is that qualified enough for you to agree with it, Taylor? That was so vague, I'm not even sure that I know what you're talking about anymore. <laughs> I think that what he's saying is that I have had a very bad experience with most INFJs that I've known for a while. Is that what you're getting at? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, one in particular, she's a huge cunt. But, <laughs> but she's not a very smart cunt, so, I mean, all's well that ends well, or is ending well. Well, that's, yeah, that's the thing, is that normally ENTPs and INFJs are known to get along well, but I think if your first encounter, or first major encounter with one, or significant experience or relationship with one, is with one who's going after you. You froze up, Eric. Then... Um, that's generally what happens when you try to criticize INFJs. <laughs> oh, I didn't criticize her. I, I was just a bit to too... That's to me. Unconforming. So that's that's the interesting thing to me is it seems that INFJs have a have a strong sense of of it doesn't make sense to me. I'm back. What? Welcome back. Thanks. How's your embosser? It's great. What? Did I publish that video about the embosser? I did post that video. I did. <clears throat> I did. Okay. I. That's good. I'm glad. The one from Denny's. Yes. Yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> I get totally embossed. Whatever. Now it's just talking with. Family. I'm glad. I'm glad that you got the embosser. That's fifty bucks. It's totally wasted. But you're not ever gonna look back and go. Yeah, really have I, I, I was sold just because the binder had the name Talking With Fans people on it. I was already sold when I saw the fact that it had a fancy gold lettering on it. That's how easily sold I am on that kind of nonsense. Are you shitting me? Do you know who you're talking to? I've got a bowl of bolts. <laughs> Why? 
You never know. You never know what you're going to need to bolt. That's why. Or this hammer. <laughs> this thing to organize my mail. There are papers that's sitting on top of my papers. <laughs> you use that as a paperweight. <laughs> that's there to organize them. Well, what I really want this to be is a shredder. So, Taylor here is another ENTP. Could you tell, Stephen Brooks? I don't have the, the personalities memorized. Okay. Uh, well, Taylor is quite a bit like me. Uh, quite similar. But, but more like Robert Downey Jr. With some distinctions, yeah. He's, he's a little bit more... Uh, F.E. bypassing. What does that mean? Badass. It means he's a little bit less concerned, perhaps, with the maintenance of other people's feelings uh, when said maintenance makes the execution of more efficient course slower. Oh, I need some of that. Also, you know, there's, there's probably a TI process there. It's I'm not very good at it. At the FE stuff? And all you feelers can see right through that, so... I think everyone just appreciates Honest Asshole Taylor a little bit more than... than I just... Yeah. Than badly schmoozing <laughs> Taylor? Like, I'm I don't even schmoozing badly. I'm trying to schmooze you poorly. Doesn't, doesn't go over well, usually. You know? Like, I'm being obviously fake. To try to influence your emotions... That's not going to work very often. So maybe right. that's what you're saying, yeah. Hey, Brooks. What's up? <clears throat> Have you gone to any raves recently? Uh, I saw Tritonal two weeks ago. I see Seven Lions oh. this week. And then uh, there's a two-day Halloween event. I actually, I really want to go down to SoCal for Escape, but I'll probably have to stay local. Damn. I haven't looked into Escape uh, yet. Yeah. Oh, it's, I mean, it'll be pretty lit. Um, yeah, let me know if you're going. I can always uh, put you in touch with the friends that are on. Have you Most taken definitely. pictures recently of yourself standing amongst a large group of beautiful women? Mm, not recently. No. Even though I, a part of moving back to San Jose was I'd be closer to my uh, my crews. Yeah, I've noticed that's it. You, you tend to... Uh, I, I've noticed there's certain... You're not... You are not far away from attractive females. There's a lot of pictures of you involve a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're not in, in dis, distant physical proximity to them, is what I'm saying. Usually not. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a sucker for a pretty face. Well, <laughs> You know, that's one of the advantages of dominant... Uh, I mean, tool function, extra feeling is... Uh, you probably... You know, do that thing. So chicks go, oh, you know, <laughs> oh, you're so funny. They probably do that too, huh? My sense of humor is very visible. <laughs> That's how you know a chick wants you to have intercourse with her is if she says, "You're so funny," and touches your shoulder. <laughs> what the fuck? Maybe a couple decades ago. Oh, is that not how it works anymore? No, that, that, that holds. The body language holds. Okay. Um, the hair it be funny. I've, I've, never, I've gotten ha-ha before, but I've never gotten the little hand thing. Maybe, maybe uh -huh. because they don't have to get that blunt with you. <laughs> so how do you like San Jose? Is it better than San Fran? Is it? Of course, I can get into a whole hell of a lot more trouble out here. I see. <clears throat> Is it like less city life type? Um, that's like the funny thing. Like San Jose, like there are suburbs, and then there's actually like the downtown area and stuff. And then I'm in Little Saigon with all my Asian friends, so there's there's parties and like things going on everywhere. Right, everywhere you look. 
San Jose is a town that is very featureless, you know? It's kind of flat and kind of Inland Empire-ish, but it's the only place around there that's a reasonable place to, to live that's not like a bad neighborhood. I take on San Jose. And <clears throat> any other thoughts on whatever topic we're talking about? I don't even know. I never, oh, we never did talk about McDonald's being healthy. Taylor, what do you think? Do you think McDonald's is healthy or unhealthy? I think that the McDonald's is a uh, miracle of modern science. Oh, my yeah, fucking God. Lot, you know. <laughs> um, Jesus. I'm not the only one, Abraham, who knows <clears throat> full well that there's nothing unhealthy about McDonald's. It's too fat. It was for a dollar uh, during the Great Depression, during the Irish potato famine, during whatever. Their population would be astronomical. So, McDonald's is too fat. The consistency of the macronutrients that you find in McDonald's food is a very fucked up ratio of like low proteins to high fats and carbs. Well, Coach, so, it, it's a lot of it's a lot of calories and a very few vitamins. So you got to have it as part of your balanced diet. Well, the burden is on Ronald to watch out for your health. Ronald sells you shit. Abraham, the whole macronutrients thing, that's nonsense. It's just make-believe stuff that, that people who don't understand that diet doesn't matter tell each other. Are you saying <laughs> So you're saying carbs, fats, and proteins, like all, all that uh, macronutrient stuff is, is fake, like it's not real? Well, I'm saying you're accurately <laughs> describing parts of the food. Yeah. You're you're there then assuming that because we can divide the food into different parts, that it must matter which parts you consume because you're neglecting to understand the way the body works. What the body does is it gets the stuff it wants and it poops out the rest or stores it as fat. Now, the mistake that you're making is to think, oh well, what I put in controls what my body does. It doesn't. Your what you put in has nothing to do with your what your body does. Your body knows what to do. And then when, when you try to control what you put in, then your body gets thrown for a loop because what it wants you to do is just eat whatever the fuck you want. And it'll handle the rest. Okay, if McDonald's is healthy food, does that mean every other fast food chain restaurant is, is No, just well? one, well, one of the golden arches. It's been specifically blessed. <laughs> They're all healthy, Abraham. They're all healthy. Okay, so they're all healthy. So then... <clears throat> hmm, I don't want to make that assumption. <laughs> we, I understand it's difficult because... To take in at first, because... The lies are so pervasive about this. And nobody calls people out when they make this mistake, usually. They just sort of go along with it. <clears throat> well, then why are people who eat out constantly, as opposed to people who cook at home are more than likely to be uh, more fatter, for lack of a better term. <laughs> Hello, Abraham. Cool. <laughs> you and I both eat out a lot. I'm pretty big, dude. <laughs> I'm pretty but big. But I'm not. Who eats out more? Me or you? Hey, use me for an example. Taylor, he eats out and he eats shitty stuff at home. I literally just finished cooking myself some leftover Pizza Hut. He's not fat. What about me, Abraham? It but is a rare are... exception when I eat at home. I eat almost every single meal <clears throat> out, right? And most of those are at either fast food restaurants or Denny's. Those are my two big things. But like you food. would agree. You would agree that our bodies are different, right? Yes, and the food's the same. And that proves that the food doesn't have anything to do with our bodies being different. Hmm. 
effect, if the warrant were correct, our bodies would be reversed. Mm, but that's I I disagree though because your your body type is like an ectomorph, and my body type is like an endomorph. Okay, so that proves it's not the food then; it's the body of the individual, and that person's relationship with a variety of different foods. So if but you the have food... a relationship with, with for example, I don't like Brussels sprouts. It doesn't matter whether it's because they're fattening or whether it's because of whatever, whatever little narrative I tell, it doesn't matter. The point is, I don't like Brussels sprouts, I'm not going to fucking... It eat. actually does. It actually does. Uh, no, it doesn't. I think it does. Why doesn't it matter that a certain type of food uh, has a certain type of uh, macronutrient type numbers? Okay, well, why, well, would, I don't why would not that matter? What is in, a macronutrient? In... What is a macronutrient? Is it like two nutrients stuck together? A carb, a fat, the things that are not. There aren't vitamins. Take them there. You, you know your your basic structures. Okay. Yeah, so basically, do we agree then that food includes carbohydrates and proteins and fats and all these sort of things? Are we all in agreement on that. Yes, Abraham. That's what I've been telling you. Okay. And do we agree also, Abraham, that the human body needs carbs and fats and proteins and all the different things? Are we in agreement on that? Yes. A healthy amount. Yes. Okay. So here's the thing. The amount your body takes is not the same thing as the amount you put in. If my well, body is a machine, body. listen, Abraham, if my body's a machine that does this, it will take up to four carbohydrates and turn it into something in my body. It'll take up to two proteins and turn it into something in my body. It'll take up to 10 fats and do something with it. And it'll take up to one whatever and do something with it well it doesn't that's matter point, what you though. put in it doesn't matter what you put in <clears> as long <throat> as it's over those numbers that's what's going to be taken the rest is going to be pooped out now if your body takes a shitload of one thing then should you personally maybe concern yourself not because of your type of body your type of whatever blah 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 but rather because you individually know that if you eat that personally a lot it makes you fat yes should you then attribute that issue to the food no But Coach Abe is. I feel trying. like I, I feel like I feel like that kid, that I feel like that kid during Crossfire who says, "Can I finish my question?" or like, "Can I finish answering the question?" <laughs> Let me help you out, Abe. <laughs> Wait, hold on, no, no, hold on, hold on. Let me say this first. Um, you do agree that uh, on an individual case by case basis, everybody's body absorbs a different level of carbs, fats, and and proteins, right? Yeah. So then if I eat, like let's say you and I eat the same amount of fast food, the same type from McDonald's or whatever, for the sake of the example, uh, if my body intakes more of the, I don't know, the, the macronutrients that are associated with, with fats and all the different types of fats, like trans fats, saturated fats, that are in that plate, if my body intakes more of that as opposed to your body, which will intake less, doesn't that mean that the food has a certain process in that in that um, <clears throat> in that process of, of, of occurrence where your body will intake or more or less fat because of the fact that more fats are available? Well, sure, we're talking about I, fast food, dude. Absolutely. But my position is if you're eating when you're hungry, not forcing <coughs> yourself to eat when you're not forcing yourself to eat when you're full and not preventing yourself from eating when you're not hungry, I mean when you are hungry, then your body will get the amount of stuff that you actually should have your naturally occurring weight that you should naturally be able to enjoy being for your entire life because it requires no effort that instead what you're advocating for is to force your body out of equilibrium into an unnatural state in which you have to control something that is natural like breathing we don't think oh i have to make sure i'm going to breathe this breath of air that breath of air that breath of air all we have to do is avoid poisonous air or polluted air same thing with food we don't need to worry about whether this oxygen came from that plant or that plant or the other plant, we just breathe it in, don't worry about it, and we avoid the poison gas. Same thing with food. We eat whatever, don't worry about it, just avoid food poisoning. Okay? That's how I it works. I think you're misunderstanding what I'm saying, though. I think what I'm saying is 
more directly associated with the fact that the more the more higher like the higher number a type of food has in fast, for example, aka fast food, aka McDonald's, right? The more availability your body has to take more or take less, depending on what type of body you have. But fast not bad. Taking more fast not bad. Being fast not what bad. What the fuck? What do you mean that's not bad? That's 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 really bad. If you if your body is continuously like like pulling in just just fat, 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 it's like of course, you're going to become what you're eating. Uh-huh. You know? Uh-huh. What the fuck do I eat, Abraham? What, I think that probably the science part of Abe's argument that Abe is missing is that um, now with fast food and relative... And I'm an endomorph. <laughs> that too. Um, our diets now within the last 50 years, contain a lot more macronutrients uh, per micronutrients than they used to. We're not walking around eating rabbit food all day long, getting a handful of calories for every D vitamin. That is that is a fact. Now, you, the, the sweeping results of that are not universal for everyone. I think that you're looking for a one-size, how to fit that dynamic to everyone in a blanket statement and that's not there because obviously me and Eric smoking are healthy as shit and eat shit and are healthy as shit and obviously don't sleep regular hours healthy as shit the thing is Abraham you're saying things that are contradictory with each other for one thing because you're starting by saying everyone's body's different don't you agree that the different people have different bodies like some have this kind of endo ecto or whatever you're saying those things may actually be things or not. I don't know. It's irrelevant. The point is, we're arguing about food. Uh, you don't know about those. Things. How much do you actually Abraham, have a say about? Abraham. Abraham. You just, you just Abraham, agree that you don't know anything about sentence. ectomorph or Abraham, endomorph. Abraham, let me finish my sentence. <laughs> you, don't, you need to understand why they're contradictory until before you laugh, okay? You don't understand okay. now. So you need to understand that before you laugh. Otherwise, you might be laughing okay. in error. So the thing okay. is, the reason it's contradictory is you're saying... The food's unhealthy. But then in the next breath, you're telling me people have different body requirements. I might need the extra fat. I might need the extra protein. Your central thesis that you are what you eat, if it's true, then I must be fat because I eat shitloads and shitloads of McDonald's. But it's not true. So either McDonald's healthiness for me is fine, it's good, and you can claim it's unhealthy for you if you want, even though it's bullshit, but, or, your other point is wrong. You can't have them both. Do you Requirements do not equal body intake, Eric. Abraham, answer my point. Do you get that you can't have both? You can't have both. But your point, you your point's already flawed, though, because you're saying that, you're, you're, you're saying specifically requirements, like your body knows exactly how much it, of whatever it, it needs to intake. Abraham, <clears throat> you told me that how much fat your body takes, how much it needs, and all that kind of stuff, it's different for different people, right? And then you told me mm, yeah. that McDonald's is unhealthy because it has a lot of fat and stuff. But yeah. the problem is, those two things run afoul of each other because if I need a lot of fat and my body doesn't collect a lot of fat naturally, then McDonald's is not unhealthy for me according to your warrant that it's fatty because fat's not unhealthy to me. Do you get it? Mm, yes, but I also I would I also say no. that. Um, okay, no, fine. I guess if we're gonna feed words into each other's mouth now. <laughs> so point being is that uh, I I do think that everyone in from an individual case by case basis, uh, everyone's body deserves or not deserves uh, like in order to maintain like a stable, uh, healthy lifestyle, deserve a certain amount. Of macronutrients, and and I don't want to get into that specifically because that's gonna revolve around like, uh, you know, like someone's like BMI or some shit, like it how tall, how much they, etc. It's not. Hey, hey, let me answer your question. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Should we get rid of cup noodle? All oh, like ramen noodles. If they're unhealthy, right? 
<laughs> you can feel yeah, the crap. I guess. I don't know. I guess. Okay, I so we get, rid of, we, get, we get rid of all we get rid of all the cheap ramen, and then a bunch of poor families die because that's what they survived on. Was the ramen healthy? Um, the ramen is not healthy, but I I would say that. Well, the lack the lack of the lack of the ramen the lack of the ramen killed the poor families, right? If that's how so the it was, ramen, was, then of course. So the ramen sustained human life. In my in my world, the definition of healthy is it sustains you. Dying isn't healthy, right? I think that's why Eric and I don't agree. <laughs> because he, he in his world, his definition is what you just said right now. Well, see, like again, that's a, some debate coaches. Like um, I had this colleague of mine. She called it. Um, she had this theory called like cup noodle cancer or something like that. Like, yeah, we could get rid of cup noodle, but then, and like, you know, less people would grow up unhealthy and get cancer. Then you'd also kill all the people who survived on that shit. The same argument can be said for GMOs. Everyone who wants to get, wanting to get rid of GMOs is really a privileged concern, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing screams like privilege like, uh, fuck Monsanto. <laughs> Right. Coach Abe, you are, are hard to kill. <laughs> I actually suck at arguing, dude. That's why I'm a speech coach and not a debate coach. But you suck at losing even more. <laughs> Do you really suck at arguing? <laughs> I'm, actually, uh, I'm actually coaching a lot of interp this year, maybe more than ever. That's exciting to hear, Brooks. I'm very happy. I'm actually, um, I'm in the process of cutting Droiler Club, so when I'm done with the cut, I'll send you a copy if you want it. Mmm, I, what, what is that piece? What the fuck? What is Droiler Club? The, I didn't the Droiler title. Club? Amy Tan, the Droiler Club? Oh, yeah, I'm, honestly, I've never heard of it, dude. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you have to remember, Brooks, I've only competed for three years, and I'm not, for uh, one. I'm not coaching this year. So really, it's, there's, it's, there's, like, I, I, I can, I'll take the piece if you want. I can give you some thoughts on it if, if my non-existing credentials would provide like the ability for me to give you that. Anybody, any who, anybody who competes has an opinion, and that's worth listening to. Um, I was gonna say, Joy Club is like the most famous like Asian story out there that anybody could possibly do. It's, it's, it's to the point where I might not cut it because it's cliche. But it's it's a story just like Asian daughters and mothers. mothers. Yeah, so it's about four daughter, four Asian daughters, four Asian mothers, and when you coach NorCal or SoCal, where it's just hella Asians, then it's a perfect piece to just have. Is it a girl girl duo piece? Girl girl. Mm, seems interesting. Yeah, I ran into the uh, the the book, but I guess I overlooked it because I have heard of the author before. Yeah, of course. It's like she's literally the most famous like Chinese author in America. That's probably true. Girl, girl. <laughs> I heard that. Um, yeah, so when are you going to have that done? I'm interested in seeing what's up. With whatever, uh, maybe, whatever. maybe hopefully in like two weeks. Mm, I see. I think um, the most interesting piece that I'm working on right now is the that one uh, Mexican duo piece. It's a uh, well, it's not limited to being a duo, but that one uh, Mexican piece is called A Day Without a Mexican. It's actually oh, a movie. Yeah, um, I've heard about it. I think a friend of mine performed it. It's, uh, it's technically illegal, according to the Chasa rules, but I managed to get a, like, a Hollywood connect to get me all the legal stuff, like all the bullshit that Chasa makes. Because it doesn't have like an ISBN? The ISBN? Is it just because it doesn't have a fucking barcode? Um, no, the th I think the rules are essentially what you need is you need to have the actual like movie, like the cat, the this movie script that's given to the cast. You need to get that, and you need to buy it. You need like an invoice slash receipt type thing. Chat, chat, chat is bullshit. Yeah, it is. It is. Definitely is. That's why I'm doing college speech next year, so I don't have to do any of the fucking bullshit with like rules and regulations. <laughs> I'm looking forward to getting slaughtered, by the way. 
Mm. Yeah, it's very good. I'm sure you'll adopt quickly. Speech is... Speech, you'll be fine, dude. You, look, you got all the skills you need for speech, Christian. You, you, you have great instincts regarding how shit plays in a speech. And you function with shit as an introverted intuitor, which means you got a singular vision and you hone it down to where you want it to be. It's a good way to coach speech. It's why I'm not a very good speech coach. Because I keep wanting to change what I'm telling the kids to do. I mean, now do it this those way. O.O.s that now you're picking up sound pretty interesting. The O.O.s are fine because it's more of a writing thing. I can, at least if nothing else, make them include interesting ideas. Mm. <clears throat> hey, Brooks. Um, oh, sorry, you were saying? You go ahead, Abraham. Uh, hey, Brooks. Um, I, kind of, I came up with this, uh, this idea... It came into my head the other day when I was reading about like feminist stuff. Um, I was sitting down with, with a with a friend of mine, and we were discussing like Asian feminism type stuff. And I'm pretty sure it's been done in the college circuit, but I want to do a POI on the detriments that fetishizing Asian women like presents to that among society. I don't okay. know if that makes sense. That sounds no, like. It, it makes tons of sense, and I have a bunch of, you know, Asian feminist friends that uh, complain about that issue all the time, and like, you know, I have two little sisters. My two little sisters have dealt with that part, with that too, right? Um, so I'm not unsympathetic to it. I just think it's funny that, um, like, they as a group, Asian girls, like, will talk about it, like, oh, you shouldn't fetishize me, and then I have to go shopping at the mall nearby. And I went shopping uh, literally like an hour after seeing a friend post, oh, we should stop fetishizing Asian women. And I walk around the mall, and every single little Asian girl at the mall has a white boyfriend. And I thought to myself, <laughs> what we really need to do is create a support group for all the poor white guys out there that are being fetishized by Asian women. I think that's even a more severe problem. I mean, you're not making it in no way. The thing is, the issue is that, the issue is that you don't see, like, I do agree with your point. I agree with you. I agree to a certain extent. Uh, the argument that's being made there, whether or not it's being one, the indirect one, whatever. But I think that the 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 because the Asian one is more prevalent and the rep the repercussions are more evident. I think it's 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 why people talk about that more as opposed to like if there was an existent like white fetishizing type thing. Like yes. for example, you'll see those repercussions in like. The sex, I think it's, I don't know if the term is called like sex trade or like human trafficking stuff. Um, as a result of fetishizing Asian women, you'll see a high demand in, in you know, like Asian women. And okay, I'm going to say a lot of really mean, terrible things are going to put me in hell when I die. Um, okay. let's, say, let's say that there's, number one, a world without fetishization. That doesn't mean dudes are going to be in the less horny and stop having sex. So the total supply in this economic system is not going to go down. You're just going to shift what, like, ethnicity of the girls are being trafficked, right? So that's one. It's still um, an issue. Yeah, I agree. It's still an issue. And then two, and then two um, I've read all sorts of different things, and I think one of the big problems is not even the fetishization. It's actually the easy passport and visa access from the certain countries. So, like, I think, like, South Korea actually has a... Yeah, so like it's easier for like South Korean women, for instance, I've read, to get into this country than from other countries. And so put those two things together, the ease of being able to move people from a certain country. So it's actually more like a policy. Like, like, uh, basically what I'm saying is attack it from the policy level first before we start, you know, saying, oh, it's a fetishization problem. Uh, I mean, what he's also telling you is What's the, the problem, Abraham, the problem Abraham with, with human trafficking is the crime of enslavement and kidnapping. That's it. That's what the problem is. Now, as far as fetishization goes, well, the, I think the real problem is, with that is it makes it hard for us to stop fetishizing them when they're so goddamn sexy. <laughs> this is coming from a white, cock, freaking Caucasian heterosexual male. <laughs> well, okay. so, well, I well, let's to expand the discussion a little bit more, right? Like, I again, I'm not arguing that like fetishization of Asian women takes place. Like, again, I've I've seen it firsthand. I've seen it in my community, but then it's like, I don't know. At the same time, like when people say, "Oh, it's a problem," it's like I'm thinking to myself, "Okay, fine. I should just go throughout my entire life and never have any sort of preferences on anything I like ever." 
I will stop fetishizing cupcakes, and I think that they're more special than all other foods. Uh, when it comes to women, I'll just treat everyone the same, and then and basically we end up with like a gray giver society, don't we? What is and there's the no problem? color. What's, what's the only person what's the, I know who's got an what, Asian family? I live in Kansas. Kansas. Everybody else problem. like Wait, let me. different chicks. You're the only one I've ever heard me like. I gotta get an Asian chick. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, well, what can you expect? I, I grew up in an environment where at least eighty percent of my high school, if not more, let me, let me just warn you. Let me just warn you right now, Abraham. As someone who's dated Asian women, they're more unhealthy than McDonald's. You should just stay away. That's hey, all. Abraham, you're, you are so <laughs> fast and loose with the causal links, too. Why? Why do I like Asian chicks? Well, there was a lot of Asian chicks in my high school. It's not my fault. <laughs> That's why I, I grew up around Asian and, people. And there shouldn't be. Call me daddy. But That's the thing why. is, the thing is, <laughs> when did you when did you hear me fetishizing Asian women specifically uh, as the stereotypes that they're presented? For example, okay. it, never heard me talking about oh, I like Asian women and like geisha outfits and like pale faces and shit. Like you'll never hear me like that. Like that you know? That's true. What's that? Abraham, y you didn't say I like. Asian women, and I like them dressed up in in period costume with their feet bound. That's true. Right. You're so you probably that. never heard me finish this. But well, anyways, I, I wanted to ask Bruce. Right I wanted to ask Bruce. Around. Around. Taylor, let I you go. Let Taylor go. Taylor, what are you going to say? Uh, I'm just interjecting bullshit. Okay. I have nothing to contribute okay. to this. I've had uh, girlfriends of several ethnicities because I didn't always live in America, the, uh, you know, you just have a bigger population of them. Supply and demand. I'm an econ major. I will tell you from the minute you started saying that, all I could think was supply, supply, supply. Okay. Um, but, and, and, and also, I don't think, I mean, I haven't asked many, but I've never heard any girl complain about being too pretty. I mean, I have, but I don't believe it. Why are you sad, Julie? You're just too gorgeous. Yeah, I mean, they don't, they'll whine about, like, being a... But no one will stop putting on makeup. They'll whine okay. on their eyeliner. I want to understand the, like... Okay, I didn't really understand how the human trafficking stuff and how the visa stuff was, like, associated with one another. Like, I, I, I don't know if you guys talked about that. Like, yeah, so I, I mentioned from what I've read, like, um, for, what's it called? Like, I think it's South Korea and other Asian countries. It's much easier to get visas to go from those countries and enter the United States. And so if there, if there happens to be a lot of Asians trafficked, one, it helps that, yes, there is a fetish and demand for them. But then, two, it also helps that it's easy to move them from their country of origin into the United, into United States. Yeah. Because they're good at math, so our government wants them. I actually ran a debate plan about that years ago. <laughs> and what was the what was the uh, conclusion? Over my plan? Oh, um, it was like a like it was like some kitty generic like how can we improve the U.S. education system? Like, um, oh no, it was a resolve we should have year round school, and so. I told my students to go counter plan, trade dumb American kids for smart Asian ones, and then have them take our standardized tests, and then education would be improved. What the fuck? Uh, I, I would say, Abraham, that the answer to your, your whole point should be this that anytime we focus, when, when somebody's been violated with criminal coercion, kidnapping, enslavement, things like that, violence, and the violence that's made part of their identity and life day in and day out. When that happens, if we're focusing on people's attitudes, sexual fantasies, or visa policies, or anything other than the fact that criminal individuals are violating the rights of other individual human beings, then you are contributing to the problem not solving it. What was that last part you said? Then you're kind of like contributing to the problem, not solving it, because all energy directed towards anything except the actual criminals responsible for actual crimes and the badness of the crimes and the prosecution of those crimes is missing the fucking point. Well, yeah, it's like I mean, me. I'm not. I'm it's not like me. It's like. I was gonna say, it's like me. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say, it's like me saying. 
man, I just watched Wolf of Wall Street, and they really romanticize cocaine use. We really need to ask ourselves why we have this cocaine fetishization in movies that's really going to stop the cocaine problem. Have you tried cocaine? He, he's demonstrating a bad argument, Taylor. <laughs> the cocaine in Asian women is the tits. <laughs> Um, I moved. Uh, trust me, there's there's many reasons I moved back well, to San Jose. I, I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. mean like I don't mean that the human trafficking stuff. Like I'm not making an argument that the human trafficking stuff that currently happening ha that's happening today is associated, or not as associated is due to like the the fetishizing of, of Asian women. I'm saying that it has a, a similar has an impact on it, but it's not. That's not definitely not the reason why. This is our racism you know? talk all over again, Abraham. No matter how hard you try, you can't take stupid, meaningless, leftist bullshit and turn it into something real. Eric believes that race is not a thing. Right. I remember that. Mm -hmm. That's why this whole Asian fetishization notion is ridiculous as well. If I were up against it, I'd say, well, I am more Asian than you and more of a woman than you. I'm well, do you believe that? Constantly, or oh, prove that I'm not. What are you going to do? Strip search me? Okay. Do you believe that genders are a thing? Yeah, I do believe that. I see. The thing is, okay, I actually so... believe in sex anyway. In 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 gender being uh, that as a default cognitive process, it is reasonable for me to deduce an individual's gender from their sex. Okay. And to so the, they wish it to be something else. They may identify themselves thusly, but it's unreasonable to demand of me, in my consciousness, to ascribe a okay, gender to Eric, them other than the one you, that their sex ascribes in my conscious I, perception of them. Yeah, I understand you. I understand you. So let's strip away the Asian, the race thing, okay? Do you think that fetishizing women in general is just objectifying them? I think it's called heterosexuality. Thank you. You're what? Thinking biology. Yeah, you know, it's like. No. I mean, I don't know how to put it, Abraham. You're it's, you're you're saying that as a response to, like, I don't know how to phrase this. Like when you sex when you sexualize someone and you make them as a sex object, you're they, you're trying to support that by saying that that's. Called it heterosexual? Is that what you're saying? Ways. It occurs in a number of different ways. Okay, In the actual act of sex in the bedroom and stuff, then obviously you're not treating her like a lady out to dinner, right? You're treating her as she wishes to be treated in that moment. And but you, you already you know, lost me because I asked, you, I asked you a question of clarification, but you already I'm lost me. Right? I'm telling you a different context. It plays out differently. If I Who is my question? Your question was about if objectification is good or bad, yada, 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 right? I'm telling you, here's your problem, Abraham. I objectify a woman when I'm having sex with her. Does that mean I'm mistreating her because I'm treating her like a whatever? No, because that's what we're doing, right? And that's the game, and that's what we're both down. But You're treating her like a stepson, is that what you're saying? That's sure. Let's, let's put it that way. Oh, I'm tuned in for another episode of The Birds and the Bees with Famous People. I'm your host. <laughs> that's the <laughs> issue. But that's the issue, though, right? No, that man, the issue? that's called having good sex with somebody. What's the issue? People have relationships with people for multiple reasons. The issue is this. After you come, if, you still, if you're still being like that, then it's a problem, right? Because that's what I'm talking about. Okay, well, you're not talking about that. You're talking about a variety of different things. But the thing, thing is, you're limiting the example into, to you're saying, intercourse, look, dude. I have a feeling of this thing that I'm talking about. It's not actually a thing. I don't know what it is. But I have it clearly defined as a distinct object with my feelings. Thus, I'm going to affirm that it must be distinct no matter how many times you tell me it's not, Eric. It's a lot of different things you're mushing into one here, Abraham. To say that, like... You know, somebody is objectifying a woman. If I am doing it as a behavior out in the world, which is to say I'm imposing upon her some sort of ontological violence, cat whistling and, and saying, 
get over here, stupid slut, and making her feel uncomfortable and shit like that. Okay. Then obviously I am doing okay. something bad. Okay, we agree that. I'm doing something bad in that context. Because, That's all I want to know. Not we because I'm objectifying her, Abraham. <laughs> it's because I'm engaging in behavior that makes her feel uncomfortable. Do you understand the difference? Because objectifying is something that goes on in your head. Okay. So we both agree that. there. And there's nothing wrong with objectifying women in your head. It's called being a man that has wants to have sex with women, you know? It's just like, don't just don't get recorded, don't say it out loud, and don't run for president. Don't combine those things. I'm doing all those things. I am doing that <laughs> too. You know, I am tired of, of of obvious truths getting in my way. I love how in that story broke, no one had a problem with a dude being privately recorded. I just... <laughs> What was my mind? A dude? Like a quote-unquote dude? Oh, I'm Trump. Trump. Trump is... See, Trump's the bad kind, right? That that's, that objectifying women is bad because... It's bad. Okay, he's like one of the richest men in the world. Okay, and I, I don't know. Like, none of us ever had pussy talk. Okay, but look, <laughs> here's what I, what I didn't like about it. Is I didn't... Hear it, but it, I think the whole thing's absurd. Specifically, it's not even about it's not even about women. It's about the fact that he sees it as being fundamentally okay and a good thing if he can exploit someone for his pleasure and get away with it, even though he suspects it's not something they want or something. That's cool. He thinks that's cool. You know, I don't think that's cool, and I condemn him for it. So it's not the uh, it's not the like joking about grabbing him in the pussy thing. Who hasn't done that? I agree. It's the fact that he's reveling in the fact that because he's famous, he can get away with doing shit that, not because he can get away with it because they like it or they want it, but that they don't do anything to stop it or something like that. That's what I don't like about it, and that's bad because that means he's saying, I will, I will use you and your okayness and chew on it for my pleasure. I don't like that at all. Okay, if I can do okay Eric, so be before okay. before we move on, Eric, I just wanted to say, so I'm just double checking, okay? So you're agreeing with me that sexually objectifying a woman without race being considered as a factor, right? You agree that that's an issue, that that's a problem. I know that sounds like a dumb question, but Abraham, it's, it's what a I'm telling question. you is, in order to answer that question, you must say the context in which the objectification occurs, the intent of the individual objectifying, and the manner in which the objectification plays out. Without why, does, factors, why does it matter, though? Why is it so specific that way? I, I gave you... Because one's wrong. And, like, who, yeah, who should set that Taylor criteria? Just said. Taylor, what Taylor just said. One's rape and the other's sex. Okay. Look, no Abraham, here's reality, dude. <laughs> we would not have this conversation anymore. You guys. Hey, Abraham, let me explain the reality to you, man. I know you're a younger fellow and you're an earnest, good <laughs> person and you wish the best in the world. But you gotta stop okay, so on Taylor the said that so one much is... because. At the end of the day, we all want everybody to treat her with respect. That doesn't change exactly. the fact that she wants you to exactly. treat her like a filthy slut some of the time. All right? It's just the truth. Okay. okay? Yeah, what the fuck? So Taylor said that there's that one's a, one's rape and one is consensual sex. Is that what she's saying? He's yeah, making right? an analogy, Abraham. He's saying the difference between objectifying in one context and another and what might be sort of deemed equivalent behavior in terms of its descriptive qualities is very very different in its moral status given the context and intent of the individuals involved you're just gonna have to try it sometime but if it helped what you want you to tell her is this you say listen sweetheart but the thing is, is probably sexually really, really sensitive, objectifying but someone is not limited to it. it's not it's not limited to like both parties agreeing you know, it's it's also about the sort of um, <clears throat> the repercussion that would result in in emotional abuse if you were to like 
go out in the real world, right? Or the world, whatever. <laughs> and, like, harass someone as a result of you as a seeing... Of what? Harass women as, as a result of you seeing them as sexual objects. Abraham. <laughs> okay. Should I, should I give up? I, I don't even know what to do with this. I, I don't even know, I don't know what to do with it. It's it's just it's the strangest thing I've ever heard in my life. Dude, it doesn't work like that. I don't know what to tell you, man. It, it, just because I mean I I don't I give up on this because I don't want to get all graphic and shit, you know? And it seems but the like thing I'm, is, I'm trying to understand to explain this to you without explaining Okay, uh, can you help me understand how it is that you're um, justifying um, sexually, like, objectifying someone? If that's the term for it, if I, I don't make it up. <laughs> I'll I'm, coin it, I'll coin I, it. I, I'm not exactly justifying, although you might say I am in certain contexts, but what I'm saying is, Abraham, we need to distinguish between contexts, right? Like, it, let's say I'm objectifying somebody in a play, Am I a bad person being the actor who plays the character who objectifies a woman because well, I play you're that character? You're perpetuating that. Excuse me? You're per perpetuating that idea. Well, what if it's a play what if it's a play that criticizes objectifying women and that one of the characters has to demonstrate it so that we can see how bad it is? Well, then the context is different. I agree there. Oh, okay. So well, why is it not okay for the context to be different in other ways as well? Why only if it's a play? Because in why not if you're having sex, which is kind of like putting on a play with one other person with your no clothes on? Because in one instance, you're directly correlating the example of objectifying a woman sexually as being bad. And in another, you're just doing it malignantly without like being able to acknowledge the repercussions of doing so, All right, which so would Abraham, be sigma. Okay, so fine. If I have sex then, with the intent of objectifying the woman while having sex so that she and I can both learn from the experience that objectifying women is... <laughs> <laughs> is it then okay for me to objectify her while I have sex? Well, I mean, I guess if that's what you're into. <laughs> like, if, if it's consensual... Um, then do I, I, really, I really feel for Abraham's love life. Uh, I, I feel for... The state of, of, I, I had no idea that, I, I just, I had a loss. I don't know what to say about it. I'm done with this conversation. It's, I, I can't say anything more without somehow crossing a line one direction or another. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Abraham, I wish you all the best as you explore the wonders <laughs> of objectifying women, not just with your mind, but with your body. That's when you really get to appreciate that it does have some redeeming qualities, okay? And I would strongly suggest that you consider it as a potentially viable option going forward with your life rather than excluding it entirely from consideration. Thanks for watching and talking with fans, people. And don't forget, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget to eat plenty of cheese.